Oh, what a wonderful time to be a wrestling fan, my friends, because everyone has been talking about it this weekend because Roman Reigns made his second return to SmackDown, but whatever, he can do whatever he wants. He is our tribal chief, and because he got into it with Cody Rhodes, and Cody Rhodes looking at Roman, and Roman's looking at Cody, and now we're going to do this big tag team match at Bad Blood where Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns are going to team together, which is like all of our dreams. There is a select portion of the community that's gone, Whoa. Roman's ruining Cody, or Cody's ruining Roman. What the flub are we going to do? Now, my first point is to be really annoying and go back in time and remind you of Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock. Now, I suppose it has technically been, let's say 2001 was the last time they were together. So it's been about 25 years. I'll just throw out a random number, more like 23 years, I suppose. When WWE was lucky enough to have two guys that could serve as the quote-unquote face of the company. And this is why John Cena was so important. Everyone forgets this now. Because WWE did go through a downturn in business after the Attitude Era, mostly because what goes up must come down. And they were trying to find their way again. When Cena came along, and he was like, okay, listen, I'm not going to hit the super duper highs that we did do in the Attitude Era. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to be here for a long ass time and I'm basically going to be your only needle mover. And that's what he did, which is why he genuinely is one of the best of all time. We then shift across to Roman Reigns finally after all the Suffolk and Succotash nonsense. Then Cody comes back from AEW and all of a sudden you could feel it. You could smell it in the air. It's like, well, Roman is making sense now ever he did since he did his big pivot character wise. Cody's skirmish excursion into the indie scene and AEW and then coming back has made everyone go oh my gosh we love Cody Rhodes to the point here we land in September 2024 and they're both at the top of the mountain they're both at the top of the pedestal and sure you could actually say that both of them are top guys within the company which is actually quite a good thing because we have Raw we have Smackdown and I'm sure one of them is going to get moved to the other brand at some point I think before Netflix moves to Raw vice versa <laughs> Raw's not a TV channel but before we get that shift Cody will probably be back on Monday nights which makes all the sense in the world. Now, I understand the tribalism aspect of wrestling these days. It happens between WWE and AEW, but it absolutely happens between the Cody Warriors and the Roman Jackets. I just made that off. It's a terrible thing, but they have their own individual fan bases. And while personally, I think it goes too far, I respect your passion. And you can find these chats online now saying, you know, who's the face of the company? They're stealing each other's thunder. What are we going to do? I guess the spotlight idea is the big one because everyone's like, oh, if you're part of this crew, you're like, oh man, Roman Reigns not even the champion. And he feels like the biggest deal. But again, it's totally subjective and you shouldn't even worry about that. You should just be over the moon the WWE is in this kind of a position because not only can you team them together which drove everybody crazy but they can headline shows individually when they come back together that's going to feel like a mega match don't forget we've only done it twice so we've got to do the rubber match we've got to have three times at some point probably in 2026 but I think it ties into what's probably happening behind the scenes too because the real life Cody Rhodes he doesn't want to share any of this with Roman Reigns and the real life Roman Reigns will feel exactly the same it's a dog eat dog world it's entertainment it's very I don't say political because well, it is political, but I don't mean political in the way it was back in the day. I don't think there's any backstabbing going on here. I actually think the backstage environment of WWE, from what we hear, is better than it ever has been. But there are other ways to be competitive in this sense. You want to cut the best promo. You want to sell the most merchandise. You want to bring in enough people watching on pay-per-view or premium live events. You want to put butts in seats. You know, you want to have the match of the night. I probably already said that, but I said it again. You want to be the guy, and you want to be the guy so much that when the powers that be sit down to say, oh man, what direction we should go in, there is your name at the top of the list and Cody Rhodes absolutely has been that Roman Reigns has absolutely been that too and the interesting shift is it's just heart absence makes the heart grow fonder Cody has been here since Wrestlemania 40 I've liked everything we've done with Cody but again it has become a discussion point too where people like maybe he needed to get knee deep into a feud which is essentially what he's doing now whereas Roman went away and then Paul Heyman got murdered the Roman came back once and he got taken out again and it sounds like he's going to be around for a while now because he's on Bad Blood I believe he's on Survivor Series and he'll be on the Saudi Arabia show. So that kind of missing, that kind of yearning will go away. It's just par for the course. That's how it works. But at the moment, people are super duper excited because if you are a Roman Reigns fan, you have been bereft of him for the last few months. But now he's back in your face with his beautiful hair and his wonderful beard. And this is only going to keep growing, of course, because if we do get to Bloodline versus Bloodline, Jimmy Uso has to get back in the fold. Maybe a Jay Uso. Paul Heyman has to come in, as well as Hikaleo, that WWE has definitely signed from New Japan. But more power to them for taking their time. But 
this is only going to create a better product. I know you're going to get mad, but one of the reasons, just one, there's other reasons too, that WWE was able to get to the levels they are now is because AEW was born. I think finally they realized, man, we can't rest on our laurels anymore. And the new regime absolutely thinks that. They want to separate that gap as much as possible. But this could happen internally as well, because Cody's no mug. He did an interview a few months ago where he even said something like this. He was like, I respect Roman Reigns. You know, Roman Reigns is the guy. I've got a lot to live up to, but I'm not happy just sort of being in the background smiling away i want to be the guy you know roman feels that way too you can get it from his aura (laughs) his live show charisma it's all cinema baby but when you have two people that in the right way are going at it like this you're gonna get better storylines you're gonna get better creative you're gonna get better matches you're gonna get better promos and again when you do get to that third clash it is going to feel massive because it will feel massive i mean if you go through history it will be like hogan and andre or rock and steve austin and john cena and randy orton to a point but again we'll do that on a different video John Cena was still the man I'm not saying that what I am saying is that this is the first time I'm repeating myself this is the first time in a while where we had mega stars that can clash in the ring and can hold the company up I don't want anybody to get injured but if one of these guys did get injured it's like 2000 and no 2000 right was it 2001 I'm pretty sure it was 2000 whatever it was when Steve Austin got injured for that whole year it was 2000 because he wasn't on Wrestlemania 16 but when he was out there was a concern at first but then The Rock stood up right and The Rock did this crazy I can't remember what it was now but he sold out like 13 shows in a row or there was some figure which nobody had done before so all of a sudden the higher ups like oh thank goodness Dwayne will do us right and then you sort of assimilated your undercard as well because Triple H went in there the Undertaker went in there and a bunch of other guys I'm going to forget people if I start naming names but it would be the same now like again I do not want it to happen but if one of them did go down Cody could take up the responsibility Roman could take up the responsibility as much as he's able to as much as he wants to and I just think that's a really really exciting in time and we should be talking about this absolutely I think this kind of discord in wrestling is the best who is the guy who does wwc is the main person to put on a poster what do we do at wrestlemania 41 did a video yesterday and make sure the card at least pops up at some point in this video have a watch and at the moment at wrestlemania i've got cody rhodes and the rock because i think once the rock comes back you have to finish that story before you do go to the road but that would probably mean over wrestlemania weekend roman reigns doesn't main event wrestlemania which would be the first time in a while and probably has a match with jacob for two now that's going to rule because roman's the man and jacob for two is the man as well and they understand the b is but it would mean that Cody was on top and arguably Roman wasn't in that spot maybe that rubs Roman the wrong way I don't know right maybe all of a sudden we have to shift some things around in order to I guess benefit the lineup and the roster that we do have and so It's exactly where you always want wrestling to be. And I remember during the, well, when WWE had a monopoly over wrestling, everybody would always talk about it. Oh my gosh, it was lightning in a bottle. I can't believe that WWE had Steve Austin and The Rock at the same time. Ooh, the lally. It was the greatest thing ever. And of course it was. Absolutely, there's a truth to that. I think some people probably thought it would never happen again, especially because we went 20 or so years without it. So now that it has returned, I just want to enjoy it as much as possible. And I don't even think there's an answer. Do you know what I mean? I don't think there's, you could argue that Cody is the guy just because he's the fresher of the two in the sense Roman's been doing it since 2020 ever since he did come back at that SummerSlam whereas I suppose we coronated Cody Rhodes in April so we've only been doing it for around about six months but there'll be you know detractors and there will be benefiters and there'll be the positives and there will be the negatives and I don't there's no way you could ever say this was a bad thing right it's like a football team or soccer for my American friends sometimes you have a multitude of good people in one position and people say like what a great problem to have who the hell are you going to play there well you don't know and the only way you're going to find out is that person has to be better in training than everybody else. And that person, when they're given the opportunity, has to make sure they stay ahead of the game. So if they do make a mistake, all of a sudden the other guy is going to move in there. And just a super quick reminder, my friends, to go to grownermind.com forward slash Simon and use the code Simon to get 10% off. There is a link in the description below. But also, if you keep it on the website, they are often doing 30% off, especially when it comes to their pre-workout gorilla mode. There's a brand new version of this now. It is genuinely the best pre-workout I've ever had in my entire life, which is why I got on board with Gorilla Mind because I was shouting about it so much they sent me a message said Simon you may as well be part of the team it really is the best line of gym supplements I've ever used and I've been training for over 20 years now which is quite sad and they even do stuff like multivitamins now and it also ships worldwide so again it's always 10% off using my code Simon and if you do keep an eye on GorillaMind.com you never know my friends you may be getting up to 30% off they got an array of stuff as well so check them out today supports me supports the channel i appreciate you and i appreciate it Now back to the video. Now, if we go on the last six months of business and numbers and metrics, I don't think either one of these guys is going to screw up. Roman Reigns is just coming out now like, 
super legendary, almost feels bigger than WWE. He's reached that status, which few people do. But again, he's put the time in. And Cody is absolutely heading in that direction as well. So you could get another 10 years out of these two, should you so wish. And should we be so lucky to have them for that long? Because I'm sure they have other goals and aspirations too. Because when you go back to Steve Austin and The Rock, as boring as it is, Steve Austin had to retire early because of injuries. And The Rock <laughs> had a very specific game plan. And let's say The Rock blew up in 1997. By 2002, he's making The Mummy 2. And then his sporadic appearances, and he's off to Hollywood, and he's changing the game entirely. So to even have Roman Reigns for four years, <laughs> he could go away now, and he would do the same kind of a thing. And with Cody, I mean, I'm sure, I think both of these guys will get into acting eventually. But Cody, to me, feels like he wants to leave a real legacy in WWE. So we'll call it 2024, when he got his you know rubber stamp or whatever. Maybe he's around at 2035, because he did once say, that he wanted to retire when he was 40 and then recently he's come out and gone Meh, maybe i'll go a little past 40 and i hope they both do i hope we can turn this into a forever feud i hope they can be friends i can hope they can be enemies i hope sometimes it feels like roman reigns is the guy and then i hope it flips back and cody rhodes feels like the guy i hope they sell merchandise and i hope while they're obviously friendly backstage because i'm done with all that drama there's also that little thing just scratching at them going well you know i don't want to don't want that guy to get too far away from me and i suppose it just triggers their ego a little bit but i think wwe is in a wonderful position especially because below this who have you got cm punk an argument could be made that cm punk is in the same star bracket as them you got drew mcintyre who's had the best year in his career in 2024 you got damien priest who's leveled up rhea ripley who is going to become a massive star you think she's big now just you wait bianca Belair still has all that potential there when she gets moved back into a singles program jay cargill looks like a flipping superhero you don't think you could do more with her down the line and there's a bunch of other randy orton randy orton who's the biggest legacy star in the whole company and you can keep doing this and you've got john cena coming back next year so in 2025 you could have three dudes that have had the company on their back for a certain amount of time and i think that's tremendous let's get them all back call up the rock call up steve austin i mean the rock and steve austin are probably going to be involved with wrestlemania next year this is a fantastic time and i hope everybody has that little thing deep down in their tum tum they're like man i can't let that guy get too far away from me because we the fans are going to be benefited so absolutely pick your side pick your team and root for them as much as possible but also so remember this is a tremendous time for pro wrestling because yes we have all this competition both externally and internally because it keeps people on their toes and believe you me i had to go back and watch a lot of wwe from 2018 and 2019 the other day it's bad, right? A lot of it is really bad. The Hell in a Cell match with Seth Rollins and Bray Wyatt, the dog food stuff with Roman Reigns, it's just a little bit miserable to watch. And it reminds you why there was an appetite for a brand new wrestling company, because it felt like WWE was taking the mick out of you all the time. And that's because they were, and Vince McMahon would laugh at you when you had some kind of a reaction. Now we have built stars and the whole roster feels like it could explode at any time. And at the moment we have two generals on top and long may that continue. So my to all of this is i have no team i'm on team miller which is the worst team to be on because it's bald and it sucks now please do like the video share the video and subscribe and leave a comment below and let me know how wrong i am click the video on the screen which are my predictions for wrestlemania 41 that will be funny because i'll get them wrong too we've talked about gorilla mind but there is also patreon.com for simon 316 a gogo -go fitness at gogo -go 20 use that code to get money off simon miller 316 on all social media simon j miller on tiktok where a bunch of the podcast clips are going right now make sure you check out the podcast too at simon's pro wrestling show just search for that you you will find it. Simon Miller on Cameo and the other thing is ProWrestlingTees.com for us Simon Miller for my wrestling t-shirts. I've just put a surprise roll-up t-shirt. It's going up there soon. Check it out. It's the best t-shirt I've ever done and everybody should buy it. Take care. Goodbye.